Kill trackers were once one reason to masterwork a weapon. I mean, I don't really care about kill trackers, but uh, that's what the tracker thing in my Discord is for. Um, Charlemagne. But we now see no reason to gate these behind masterworking. They'll be present by default on all weapons that shipped in Forsaken and later. Exotic weapons prior to Forsaken will be updated in a later release. There is some cool stuff coming ahead. I promise you. Yes, this means masterworking should no longer be seen as mandatory. I mean, it should be seen as mandatory. And we expect that plus 10 to a weapon stat or plus 10 to primary stat, plus 3 to other stats for adepts to only matter to dedicated PvP players. Really? That's... That's... I don't like meaningless stuff in a game. They're basically taking away the reason for masterworking. We have... I mean, I still like my stats, but a lot of people aren't really going to care. We have no specific plans for changes to masterworking at this stage, but we'll revisit it later. Note that we did discuss gating the origin trait behind masterworking. But ultimately, this wouldn't have achieved the goal of weapon differentiation for non-masterworked weapons. I think they're putting too much thought into masterworking. Following in the armor team's footsteps, weapon mods for legendary weapons are now free and instant to insert. Really? Weapon mods for legendary weapons are now free and instant to insert. Oh, I know what they're talking about. Okay, like, um, targeting adjuster. Or, like, rampage spec. Or dragonfly spec. That, that stuff. Uh, major spec. Boss spec. Okay. We believe that many pain points around special weapons and crucible are exacerbated by how easy it currently is to acquire special ammo. And while we've touched this in the past, we're making a further adjustment now. Players now only drop one special ammo on death or equivalent, no matter how much they were carrying. I don't like that. It should be two. As long as they weren't completely empty. The maximum you can pick up off a special brick is one for a shotgun, fusion rifle, or sniper rifle. Like, if Diver is carrying six special ammo, which may happen, um, I'll only drop one if I die. And I will die. <laughs> Uh, scavenger mods add to this as normal, but we'll be evaluating their place in Crucible in the future. Players quickly found another way to execute the quick swap glitch, so we fixed another animation cancel. <laughs> Archetypes! The Season 15 Fusion Rifle rework had a lot of moving parts. Rapid Fire, Precision and Adaptive Fusions came out of this different, but all quite strong, but high impact fusions are hurting. We've definitely seen all fusion rifle subfamilies occupy different roles and want to maintain the large differences in charge time to keep these distinct for now. So we're nudging damage up to make it easier for these to land kills at range in PvP, and we are bumping the PvE damage scaler. That said, we'll keep an eye on how they're doing and may adjust charge time down a smidge in a future release. Increased high impact fusion rifle damage for Bolt from 62 to 64. This doesn't seem like a lot, but it allows more rolls to cross bolts to kill thresholds. Yeah, it's kind of like when we were talking about um, resilience the other day. Like, someone in their video, they're like, well, if you go up, you know, to whatever resilience, it's really not much of a change, so it's worth it. And it's like, dude, you don't understand resilience. Like, you don't have to go up high. The fact is, the small benefit you do get keeps you from getting one shot, and that's what you want. So... So yeah, a little change like this could make a difference, and it, it, it'd be nice. Like, we once, uh, I think it was a couple of seasons ago, we asked Bungie to do something about hand cannon shots, because you'd get, like, a, a hand cannon precision final blow on the EDZ against a red bar, and they wouldn't die, and it's like, why are they leaving a smidge of their health after getting a headshot? So Bungie bumped the damage a little bit, or they reduced the damage at the end. I don't know. You can one-shot red bars on the EDZ now, which should be the case. Okay, increased high impact fusion rifle PvE damage bonus from 15% to 20%. Dude, so fusions are still going to be strong next year. Or ne yeah, next season. Interesting. There's there's no... Usually they nerf the archetypes that are strong. And they buff the archetypes that are going to be 
the focus for the next season. It's like Scout Rifles, for example, would be buffed. We, we don't know, though. We haven't seen that. Uh, we like that the crowd control capabilities of breach grenade launchers and PVE have taken off, but it stands there isn't a meaningful trade-off for the added utility that blinding or concussion grenades give you. And it's unreasonable that a way to really annoy other players in PvP can also one-shot them. Reduced blind... Oh, I, I want to know why they one-shot them, though. I mean, we need to ask these questions. Wh what is the person doing that? That's allowing them to be one shot. Reduce blinding and concussion grenade damage by 25%. Yowza. That is scary. Swap your gun, finish them off with a hand cannon. That's really what that means. Rocket launcher subfamilies have lacked meaningful differences for a while now. And their free tracking precisions are flat out better. So we're pushing them further apart by adjusting damage. We may take a deeper look at rocket launchers later. Damage adjustment by subfamily. Precisions. Okay. Hold on. I need to see what a precision is. I don't know the frames too well for rocket launchers. So an example of a precision rocket launcher. Pyroclastic flow, which you guys probably don't know because that's from Shadowkeep. Okay. Royal Entry. I love Royal Entry. And then Sub-Zero Salvo from, um, what's it called? Europa. <laughs> Those are the only two that I see for precisions. Okay. Uh, so that's getting a 0.95 times adjustment. High impacts are one. What do we have for high impact? <laughs> Leviathan. Okay. Sleepless from the Dreaming City. And then tomorrow's answer from Trials. All right. And a bunch of sunset weapons. And then the adaptives are 1.05. Those are the Shining Sphere from uh, Iron Banner. Uh, Huskow, which is a world drop. And Apex Predator, which is from Last Wish. There's a lot of these. And that's it for the non-sunsets. <clears throat> um, full disclosure... While my vault has almost every weapon, I don't have every weapon because I didn't play all of year one. Like, there were a couple seasons I missed because my computer at the time couldn't handle the game. But I have most, so. Um, but the year one stuff should be sunset. And the aggressive frames, that means bad omens. That's getting a 1.05 buff. And then Heretic from the moon. And then He's in Vengeance from Vog. Wow, really? That's a really good vengeance. That's way better than my adapt or my time loss. My time loss is trash. Okay, anyway, we took a big swing at sniper rifle aim assist based on zoom and beyond light and having seen this play out are revisiting the tuning on the zoom based double A scaling. Low zoom snipers got more of an aim assist reduction than they needed. Really? Oh, wait, reduction. Yeah, I, I never complain about aim assist on a sniper. I suck at them. And high zoom snipers are getting some pretty silly headshots now. I do like high zooms. Reduce the variance in aim assist scaling between low, 35 zoom, and high zoom, which is 60, sniper rifles. Cone angle scaler increased by 25% on low zoom, reduced by 9% on high zoom. Pulse rifles take slightly too long to kill red bar enemies in PvE. Yes. I feel like pulse rifles are overall, save for, I don't know, one or two, are pretty weak. We're buffing their damage versus miners by 10%. Thank you. But if you want exotic pulse rifles to feel better at this, oh boy, keep reading. Oh boy. Like, guys, it's going to be good. Exotic weapons exotic primary weapons and trace rifles aren't sufficiently stronger than legendaries for them to be worth bringing into hard pve content particularly against miners true note that this change applies to all exotics that use primary ammo all exotics all exotics that use primary ammo and includes most secondary effects e.g perk triggered explosions Ooh, it's my favorite Increased damage versus miners in PvE by 
Yes. Oh, let's go. It's because everyone's using like heavy exotics. Chaperone is a terror in PvP, particularly with the nerf to pellet shotguns and the reduced frequency of grenade and melee abilities. And it outperforms some weapons that ought to be good counters to it. For example, sidearms and submachine guns should counter Chaperone, but they don't. So they reduce passive range buff from two meters to a half a meter. Yowza, that's a huge difference. Duality is in a similar place to Chaperone, but it's not quite as rangy. On the other hand, its exotic trait shift with the constraint that it would wipe on reload to make it harder to chain. Having seen it in action for a while now, we don't think that limitation needs to be there. So they're reducing the passive range buff in slug mode when aiming down sights. Uh, that's right. It's going to be pellet when you hip fire and it's slug when you ADS. From 1.25 meters to half a meter, pellet mode is unaffected. The on black wings da damage buff no longer clears on reload. Teraba is extremely strong as it is, but it currently demands complete commitment. Yes, this is such an amazing SMG. And I have destroyed entire sides of like Gambit, like an entire section in like seconds. It's it. It is like the best gun against like those giant yellow bar catch-up bosses when you're trying to get moats. If it's procced. And this is the problem. Like if you reload, I think if you reload it wipes. If you swip if you switch weapons, if you accidentally whip out your ghost, the perk goes away. <laughs> Even if you don't proc it. Like it's there waiting for you to hold down R and if you do anything else, it, it goes away. Uh, and honestly, in regular mode, it's there are better SMGs. So this constraint is a bit harsher than it needs to be. So we've loosened it without removing it entirely. Also, while the duration extension when damaging players did actually function in PvP, it was so subtle that players kept reporting that it was bugged. So we bumped them up. It now, now reduces the perk progress by half instead of clearing it on weapon stow. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's better than it was. Increase the Ravenous Beast duration um, increases for damaging a player slightly. Okay, what about PvE? Okay, Ruinous Effigy has been overdue for a look at its Beyond Light nerf. Yeah, I don't feel like... I feel like that didn't need to be nerfed. The nerf to damage dealt while guarding. So we're rolling that back. Note that the other part of that nerf was to the Airborne Standard Melee Attack... And this has not been touched. So they increase the damage dealt by guarding with a transmutation sphere by 66%. 30% against players. And note that the transmutation sphere multi-kills now count for orb generation armor mods. Really? Previously only kills with the beam would trigger this. Huh. Lumina stats just don't compare with other 140 RPM adaptive hand cannon. So that's a really cool hand cannon in concept, but I never, I never really cared for it. There's better guns. Uh, and its usage reflects that. So we're updating these alongside some of the legendary hand cannons that also used to be 150 RPMs. The increased range stat is going uh, from 44 to 59. Nice. They're increasing the base stability stat from 46 to 56. Honestly, stability might help. Yeah, I'm not sure if it needs stability or handling, but apparently stability is where it needs to be. Sorry, Thorn fans. Thorn is already strong and popular, and a similar buff would turn it into a monster in PvP. Thorn is fine. It's true. Agar Scepter, the initial implementation, used super regen scalers, which had very weird effects and activities, that also had scalers. So we rebuilt it to turn off regeneration while active and have implemented a slower drain using a different method. Fixed being able to activate or continue using empowered mode while suppressed or stasis encased. Rebuilt the perk uh, used to modify supercharge rate now freezes super recharge and deducts super directly, fixing several issues with activities that change charge rate and outliers for recharge based on intellect stat. Big Gun, thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. I'm Die Bear. Nice to have you here. Super should now drain more slowly while empowered. 
And thank you for the sub, dude. 19 months. Red Rock, dude, you've been here the whole time. How are you doing, man? So good to have you here. This is a long twab. We're, we're two thirds of the way through, guys. Well, okay, a lot of that, we might have movies of the week, so we don't have to go through that. Uh, maybe we will watch them, though. I don't know. Dead Man's Tail feels good to use on both mouse and keyboard and controller now, and we don't want to go back to it feeling unreliable, but it's far too good at spamming hip fire shots at long range as it stands. Reduce the catalyst hip fire rate of fire from 150 to 130 RPM. Wow, that's a bit of a jump. Lawrence Driver and Arbalest remain fairly hard to counter in PvP. I, I Lawrence Driver is stupid, but like it's noticeable. But I, I personally have not been destroyed by it to the point where I feel like it needs to be nerfed. Um, Arbalest has not been a problem for me, really. I mean, once in a while I die to it, but, like, that's going to happen. I mean, when I played PvP last time, people were dying to the Leviathan Rage Shotgun, who no one knows the name of. And, like, does that mean it needs to be nerfed? Of course not. It's Sunset. <laughs> Yo, Kezzy, what's going on? You're good. You're trying to survive in Icarus. So they increased flinch received. What do those keep you from flinching? You can tell how much I use those guns. Uh, Forerunner's ammo economy was fairly conservative when we shipped 30th anniversary, but having seen how it's used in PvP, we believe it would benefit from gaining a little more ammo per special brick. I didn't know it was special. I don't use it. Increase the ammo picked up from a special ammo brick from 2 to 3. Isn't that an... You're eating? Oh, okay. I'm I'm not getting pickle juice on my phone. <laughs> Thus, no shout out for Big Gun. You know what? You guys discuss that. That's between you. <laughs> Dude, isn't Forerunner... What is that? Isn't that a, a sidearm? What the hell is Forerunner supposed to be? Increased ammo picked up from special ammo brick from two to three, right? It is a si it's a special ammo sidearm. That's so weird. Ah, oh, Bungie, stop doing drugs. Legendary weapons. Several legendary weapons have out of band stats, either to their benefit, detriment, or a bit of both. When infusion caps were still around, this was okay because they'd cycle out eventually. But now the weapons remain viable in all activities indefinitely. And the solution is to adjust outliers to be in band. As mentioned in the February 2021 state of the game. That was a long time ago. Hand cannons. The band for legendary 140 RPM hand cannon aim assist ends at 84 and this extreme should be for a hand cannon from a pinnacle activity like a raid or trials. But when 150s were converted to 140s, many of their stats were either too low or too high. We're adjusting the stats of these to be within the standard ranges up or down as follows. An overall buff in most cases. What I find funny is all of these are... Okay, no, no they're not all sunset. But like Dire and Waking are like, what, two years old? Okay, Dire Promise is getting plus four range and plus three stability, which is awesome with a minus four aim assist. I don't think that's a problem. Mind you, I don't think these stats are really that big of a deal either. Waking Vigil plus six range. I mean, we'll still take range, right? Plus five stability, minus three aim assist. Jack, Queen, King, three. I think that's from like the Osiris era. Like who the hell even uses that? Plus three range, plus three stability, minus eight aim assist. And spare rations. I love you, spare rations. Plus four range, plus four stability, and minus nine aim assist. Felwinter's lie intrinsic perk makes it far too consistent and lethal compared to similar shotguns. And it's had plenty of time to shine. Oh, come on. Stop with that. Like, who cares how long it's been in the game? Just, just balance it. It's getting a plus 15% stress spread angle. You better get in someone's face with that one. Most of Aikilo's SMG stats are wildly out of band for an aggressive SMG, but it does suffer from having a low zoom compared to other popular options. Yes, I personally feel the Aikilo's SMG is a weaker SMG for different reasons. So we're getting plus one zoom, minus five range, minus seven stability, minus eight handling, and minus five aim assist. This is going to feel like 
crap. It's ew. Okay, anyway. Typically, we don't adjust base stats on specific weapons at all post-ship, so we don't intend to do this regularly. Perks. We want players to be able to choose a build into hip firing more easily, so we're adjusting the hip fire grip perk to support this. Are we going to keep getting it on sniper rifles? I mean, if you're going to give me a hip fire sniper rifle, at least give me some crosshairs when we're in hip fire mode. Which would be nice anyway, because I use the crosshairs for like grenades and stuff. And like, why don't I have crosshairs? It doesn't make sense. Okay. It now increases damage fall off start and end distances by 20%. Except on shotgun, sniper rifle, and fusion rifle. Like, sniper rifle. Adagio often felt like it changed a weapon subfamily to the next slowest rate of fire. I mean, wasn't that kind of what it was supposed to do? But worse, particularly when comparing damage fallout. They increased the duration from 5 seconds to 7 seconds, which is not a long time. Uh, increased damage bonus except on bows and fusion rifles from 25% to 30%. And it now adds a plus 10 range stat. I still don't feel like that's something I want to use. Changing rate of fire is not something I'm interested in on a gun. I like consistency because I play by feel. Like, I don't want the gun changing. Added a timer to the buff text to make it easier to tell when it's going to expire. Dual loader is okay on paper. Yeah, I hate dual loader. But in practice, that reload speed is pretty painful. Reduce reload stat penalty from minus 50 to minus 35. Uh, that might make it viable. We'll have to test it. Danger zone felt pretty risky to use in some cases, resulting in a lot of self-damage, which we already do anyway. Reduced self-damage scaler for grenade launchers combined with other scalers. This ends up reducing self-damage from 1.25 times to 0.75. Tap the trigger is the meta breaking perk on a particular fusion rifle. We're guessing main ingredient. When stacked with other elements of this role, it makes fusion rifles much too stable. So much... So that we stopped putting it on fusion rifles. And then Squid Face sold it a few times. Definitely main ingredient. With this change, we believe it's still quite a strong perk without being overpowered. So it's likely to appear on future fusion rifles. Note, we did try reducing stability from plus 40 to plus 20. But in playtest, the difference wasn't perceptible. On fusion rifles only, tap to the trigger reduce stability bonus from plus 40 to plus 10. Changed max recoil angle down from 0.5 to 0.875. And changed the error angle scale from 0.9 to 0.975. Unchanged on all other weapons. Head Seeker didn't work as intended on aggressive burst pulse rifles because the buff's duration was too short. Sacred Providence is the only viable pulse rifle that benefits from this in Season 16, Although there is such a pulse in the season, it doesn't roll with Headseeker. But expect to see more in future seasons. So, um, if you, the extended buff duration goes from 0.17 to 0.3 seconds, which is quite a change. Headseeker also comes on Cold Denial, which is from Season of Arrivals. You can still get that. And I was actually really surprised. Uh, I was looking at... This is funny. I was looking at Blast Furnace from Black Armory. I had no idea it came with Headseeker. And it's on the curated roll, so I have this. <laughs> I didn't realize it. I just used the gun in Slade. Okay, so let's talk about Eager Edge. Oh, this is going to suck. It takes a lot of fun to use. Or it is a lot of fun to use, but it can be used to do some mind-blowing, environment-breaking things if used in particular ways while airborne. While the tuning below isn't meant to remove the fun factor, we have a fresh raid and other fun content coming with the Witch Queen and want to ensure we retain challenge behind our upcoming rewards. Breaking out of maps can be fun indeed, but can easily remove the prestige and value of a given item or experience. So they reduce the lunge distance benefit while airborne by 25%. And it now caps maximum player airborne velocity to a fairly high value while active. Don't know what the cap is. Occasionally we'll shelve perks because they're not working for some reason. 
Too strong or too weak? Uh-oh. This means we won't put them on weapons in the future unless we change the perk. In many cases, we'd rather put design work into new perks than old ones, but there's a whole perks section here. Anyway, these perks are shelved. Some have been shelved for a while. Bottomless Grief and Celerity both were attempts to inject some uniqueness into Trials of Osiris and Nightfall weapons, which we're doing now with the Origin Traits. Yes, I sadly have those on weapons, and I would rather have something else. Underdog. Um, man, what does Underdog do? I forgot. I, I never use it, guys. Underdog weapon trait. Destiny 2. Yo, Artifact! Thank you for the raid! Dude, you're like the third person today. It's a lot of raids coming in. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dybear. We're going through the TWAB right now. Uh, Underdog. This weapon gains a boost to reload speed as your health gets... Yeah. Like, why would... I'd rather just go with Rampage and kill it. Like, if it's dead, it can't hurt me, right? Then you don't need the reload speed. I'm just saying. Underdog is so bad you literally don't know what it is. <laughs> right, listen. I mean, there is a lot I know about the game. That one is special. It's okay. It's okay, Glitch. I got this one. I got this one. <laughs> I didn't mess it up either. <laughs> Viable, what were you doing? I, You were doing dares, weren't you? Like, I need to do dares. We are going to do some dares tonight, chat. Um, shield disorient. Now, this is an interesting one because, uh, I have friends who actually like this. They're always like, oh, shield disorient. But to be real, they like every gun they get, even if it's trash. So energy match shield explosion disorients nearby combatants. Um, I never go with this on a gun. So my heart is not broken. Okay. Air assault. Though note that this may get a redesign in a future season. Okay, I had no idea what gun this was on. And come to find out it was on spare rations. And the reason why I happen to have Blast Furnace up is because I, ha I looked in my vault for air assault and this is the one that had it. So you gain increased handling while airborne. You know what's funny, guys? Is you could just go with Icarus Grip. This improves accuracy while airborne. And a lot of people use this on, like, shotguns and stuff in PvP. So, I don't know. Air assault. You'd think... Like, why the hell is it on a pulse rifle? You'd think that would be more of an SMG thing. Excuse me? It's on spare rations and blast furnace? Yeah, dude! It's, it was available on those. So that was blast furnace. Let me pull up spare rations. So spare rations... Um, I read that it was on spare rations. I'm actually not seeing it, but I could have sworn I saw it here before. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on spare rations. That's so weird. And they don't remove perks from D2 Gunsmith. But yeah, it was on Blast, blast Furnace. It would make sense on spare rations, like, if you were to use it. Okay. Let's let's keep going. I do have I, I I like spare rations. The near future in season 17 will have a set of PvP focused weapon changes, including new ways for players to build for flinch resistance. That would be kind of nice. Do the flinch that we get in GM Nightfall sometimes, like when using snipers or raids. That would be nice for like doing DPS with snipers. Balance tuning for primary weapons. Are we actually gonna balance weapons? We're looking at you, Pulse Rifles, lightweights in particular. Okay, so we're not going to just gloss over that. What are the lightweight frames for Pulses? Lightweight. I like to actually know, like, what guns we're talking about. So with lightweights for Kinetics, we're looking at Chattering Bone. Um, That's the only one. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's look at energies. We've got Last Perdition, which is actually... No, that's adaptive. Why is that showing me lightweight? Infinite Paths is Sunset. 
Okay, Pleiades Corrector. I have two of the Guys, lightweights aren't really that in the game. They're, like, there's two. <laughs> there could be more than that, but, like, I, I have two that are not sunset. Okay. Next. Where was that? Special weapon tuning snapshot feeling mandatory on sniper rifles and PvP. Other balance changes. Um, I wonder what they're going to do. I don't want them to ruin snapshot. I like it in PvE. It just makes the gun feel fun. I don't want to see it nerfed just because people are using it. I hate that. Another PvP special ammo economy change if needed. Adjusting how zoom outliers, both low and high, affect the performance of a subset of weapons. Scope column shouldn't be the most important thing on a weapon. This could take various forms, uh, but the intent is to bring both high and low outliers towards the average to the overall benefit of the weapon archetype. And then we're also adjusting several multi-request or much-requested exotics along with legendary perks. If you'd like to support this channel, liking and commenting on the videos tells YouTube to share these videos with others who may find them useful. If you'd like to provide monetary support to help keep this channel up and running, visit my locals and Subscribestar communities.